around, Ryan. Don't stand there looking at me as if you don't know what I'm talking about. Well, I don't. Well, I heard it with my own two ears. You said to Kevin, you wished you had gotten the money from Nick Zabo and not from Delian. What money? Why? Look, uh, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor, huh? What might that be? Just leave it alone. Forget you heard it, please, huh? John, you're in trouble. No, nothing I can't handle. Well, then why can't you tell me what it is? Well, I, I don't want to worry you. I mean, I don't, darling. That's my right. That's my prerogative. I mean, if I see something's going to make you unhappy and I can spare you from that, what do I have to tell you for? Well, I could give you a few good reasons, all of which you know. I mean, my lord, I'm your wife. I'm your partner, man. We've never had any secrets from each other. Not in 34 years, not that I know of. John, it's too late in the game to be changed of the rules. I don't want to tell you. Well, now. That's... That's something else. Oh, no. Look, for the love of heaven, lady, will you please... Now, don't, don't tell me not to be angry, John, and don't tell me not to be hurt. I mean, Lord, what else am I supposed to feel? What are you saying? That you don't trust me enough to share your trouble with me? Look, I've been a damn fool. I'm asking you to have the good grace to let me be a damn fool in private, huh? John, Kevin is ready to forgive your foolishness. And Deedee apparently knows what's going on. I mean, are you, are you actually saying that you can share it with them? And you can't share with me? No, of course not. I mean, Kevin was in on it from the beginning. He saw it happen, and Dee. What, Dee? Uh, well, Dee's the problem. She's also the solution, and I'm asking you for the last time, please, let it alone, huh? <laughs> you took money from Dee? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I, I, I borrowed money from Dee. I mean, it was a loan. It was strictly a business transaction. I am paying her back with interest. Now, are you satisfied? <laughs> John, I don't understand why. I mean, you have perfectly good credit. I mean, why didn't you borrow money from the bank? Well, I was a little... Uh, I was a little overextended. And it was just simpler to, to borrow money from Dee. I mean, I didn't ask. She offered. How much money? A lot. <laughs> what is a lot, man? I mean, are you talking about $5,000? Two? A uh, thousand dollars? What? Well, I might as well tell you the whole story. I borrowed $83,000 from Dee. I put the bar up as collateral. Just at the moment, for all intents and purposes, Dee is the owner of Ryan's. John! what you've just said? I said that I killed my brother-in-law. Not intentionally, but the effect is the same. Tom's dead. May I have that, please? Of course. And another and another. I killed him, Ray. Will you stop? You're making it sound like murder. It wasn't murder, it was a mistake. All right. Now will you sit down and tell me about it? All right, Tom had an accident in his kitchen. He choked on a piece of apple, he passed out, he fell down and injured his throat, bruised the larynx, displaced the trachea. Faith wanted me to take care of him, so I got him to the hospital. We ran a, a set of x-rays and they were all negative. And then? The nurse called me about one o'clock in the morning and told me that Tom was complaining of a headache. And I missed it. You missed what? The head injury. 
because Delia and I were having a fight. Tom died a few hours later. Oh, my dear, I'm so sorry. A anybody could have missed the diagnosis. I, I wouldn't get into any trouble for that. <laughs> that I really did something stupid because I was afraid that Faith would think that I killed her Tom. I changed the medical orders to make it look like I had done everything possible for him, and I hadn't. All right, what's so stupid about that? No one will ever know. But if they find out, if they ask the nurses, if I get caught, it's goodbye to the old medical license, it's goodbye to old Roger at Riverside Hospital. Now, darling, sit down. That is not going to happen. You just set your mind at ease. You really are a good friend, Ray. Well, I've shared more of myself with you than anyone else, and I love it when you share yourself with me. I had to tell someone, and uh, Delia is so obsessed with her own plots and schemes and commodities, she doesn't even know I'm around. You're always welcome here, you know that. That's why I came by. Right now, Ray, I figure you're about the best friend I have in the world. Well, we have a bit in common. Frank's obsessed with somebody other than me, and Delia's obsessed with somebody other than you, yourself. You know, if I were Delia, I pay more attention to you. Allow me to fill Madame's glass. Oh, I don't think my I better. My head's feeling funny now. You don't have to drink it, but it's probably just the altitude. We're on the forty-eighth floor. I know that view of the city. Do you do all this for all your important clients? For those in which we have a special interest. <laughs> George? Yes, Mr. Fox? Perhaps Mrs. Coleridge would prefer some coffee. Yes, sir. This is so nice. I wish Ryan's could be like this. Ryan's? Sort of a neighborhood bar. Friends of mine run it, Maeve and Johnny Ryan. But it'd be hard to make much money, though, with three waiters for every two customers. <laughs> Fortunately, we're not concerned about turning a profit here. You do that downstairs. Exactly. Well, you sure must make a lot to have a room like this for just you and your company. It's wonderful. You have the most delightful gift for appreciating things. Well, especially if they're elegant. And expensive. Mr. Fox, this has been the nicest dinner. No, no, no. Not Mr. Fox, please. Dan. Dan? Dan. Dan. That's better. George? <gasps> Candy. <laughs> I just love being fussed over like this. Well, they say friendships are bonded in bread and wine. As for being fussed over, I can't imagine that that wouldn't be your everyday experience. Me? A woman with your business acumen coupled with everything else. Everything else? Mrs. Coleridge, you are the most extraordinarily attractive client in the history of Grimley and Fox. <laughs> $3,000? Including interest, I'm paying her back $1,000 a month. How, how could that happen? Well, I was wrong. This is the worst. I mean, why on earth would we need $83,000? 
I lost it. Lost it? Yeah. In the commodities market. I don't know. I guess I just went crazy or something. I might just as well have gone out to the track and blown the whole bundle in one afternoon or, or thrown it off the top of the World Trade Center. Anyway, I was following Dee's lead. She hit a downward trend. And then she switched her commodities, and I didn't know she'd switched, and all of a sudden I... Not making much sense, huh? Delia? No. You're looking a little bit pale. Can I get you a drink? No, thank you. Delia and her commodities? Yeah. You see, it hit me like nothing had ever hit me before. I was cash poor because of the Kaliri farm, you know. Oh. Now, look, please don't look like that. It's the one decent thing I've done all year. Well, a D would come in $10,000 richer every day. You know how she did it. I couldn't care less, John. She got her tips from you. From me? I don't know one thing about commodities. Well, that's it, darling. It's, it's, it's what, you, what you don't know, you know. Or something, I mean... You had uh, some kind of tuning in to her, or she had tuning in to you, or something. Anyway, she'd come in here every day, keep her eyes and ears open, and then you'd say things like, oh, uh, the tea tastes a little bitter today, and then she would switch out of tea and into aluminum, because she saw you wrapping up the leftovers in, in aluminum foil, and like that. John, she made thousands and thousands of dollars. On tips provided by you. <laughs> Hell of it is. Never worked for me. I mean, uh, I could never pick up on the clues. I may never drink another cup of tea as long as I live. Well, you see, there's it. That's just what I'm talking about. Now, if Dee had heard you say that, she'd go right out and switch out of tea. John, you have to explain it to me. I, I don't understand now. What about our, our savings? What about our securities? They're gone. Everything? A whole lot. How? I didn't put in a cutoff order to stop them from trading in my name. So every day I kept getting deeper and deeper into debt. And Dee came along and offered to bail me out. She wanted collateral. All I had to give her was the bar. Oh, God, mercy, look at I guess I don't have to tell you I'm sorry. You know I'm sorry. John, when? When did this all happen? Six months ago, about Easter. You mean you've been lying to me for six months? No, and... don't call it lying. It wasn't well, lying. What else am I supposed to call it? Excuse me. Hi, I'm home. Well, this certainly has been a terrific dinner, but maybe I should be heading home. Well, we spoke earlier about uh, that dip in tea. You were concerned about it, and we talked about diversifying. Yeah. But maybe this isn't the time to be talking business. Another day, perhaps. Absolutely. You know, if there's one thing I can't stay away from, it's my commodities. Grimley's vacation has turned into be a blessing for me. Oh, why's that? We would never have met otherwise. Mrs. Coleridge, I'd like to take an active interest in your portfolio. Well, sure. Thank you. And don't be concerned about that little dip in tea. We'll deal with it. But I am concerned. If there's any dip at all, it means there's been a change in Maeve's habits. Maeve's habits? Yes, I told you. Remember, that's how I make my investments. By watching my ex-mother-in-law, Maeve Ryan. If Maeve's enjoying her tea, then I invest in that. And if she switches off to something else like cocoa, or pineapple punch, or anything, then I switch with her. She's my lucky charm, you could say. You have increased your original investment 25 times by observing a Mrs. Ryan's habits concerning food and drink. It works. Well, there's no denying that. The only thing is, now I have to get 
back in closer touch with me so I can find out what my next investment should be. Well, I can't argue with success. But if you'd like to finish your coffee down in the office, I could show you a more conventionally planned portfolio. Go back to the office? Yes. We could discuss some of the other fringe benefits that are due to clients in your category. What sort of fringe benefits? Well, tickets to the theater, gallery openings, that kind of thing. As a matter of fact, I think there are some tickets down there to a masked ball coming up. Oh. Well, I would love to talk about all that. But I really have to run. Do you? Sorry. You know, maybe it's the altitude, but I thought I heard you say something about a masked ball. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I know my way to the elevator. Mrs. Coleridge? Don't forget us, working away here on your behalf. Oh, no. And thanks for the lovely dinner. Mr. Dan? Dan. You know, the uh, combination of a strong drink and your presence has uh, made me forget my troubles. Good. Because you've taken my mind off mine. Off your what? Troubles. Well, that's true. You uh, do have troubles of your own. And you've been able to listen to mine. That's uh, a sign of a good friend. I've always been your good friend. And loving friend? Oh, yeah, that too. You know, I thought that you had given up everything for the uh, junior senator from New York. Well, I had, but that didn't turn out to be as permanent as I hoped. Oh? So? Now it's left to me to uh, be grateful for old friends, who often turn out to be the best friends. Old friends who know you the way you are? Yeah. And keep you from being lonely. Or sad. Or guilty, shh, or... Shh, shh, don't do that. Let me distract you. I'm easily distracted. Right now, there's so many good reasons for me to have a loving friend. To forget everything and everyone. Yes. terrible. Is there something I can do? Uh, no. Uh, sweetheart, thanks for asking, but that's nothing. Should I go away? No, you might as well notice now. I lost a lot of money in the commodities market. And I couldn't cover my losses, so I borrowed $83,000 from D. I had to put a bar as collateral. D owns Ryan's? Until I can pay off the loan, we're all more or less working for her, yeah. It isn't that. And it isn't Delia. Lord knows this family has put up with enough dreadful behavior from that girl down through the years that if she's got money to burn, I wouldn't mind borrowing some from her under certain circumstances. It isn't the money. And it isn't the gambling, John, because that's what it was, gambling commodities. That's what it was, more or less. It's the lie. It's the, the violation of promises that you made to each other. It's the fact that I can't count on you to tell me the truth. It's unthinkable. I truly feel it. 
as if something has changed in some kind of sad and dreadful way, and I don't know what to do next. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be talking about this in front of Siobhan. Lady, just notice, I didn't think of it as lying to you. That may even be worse. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Siobhan. I can't discuss it with you. Well, may I just say one thing? Um, don't stop now. Talk to him. Siobhan, I'm standing right in this room with your father that walked out. Well, will you wait here just one minute, please? Let me say this, John. I'm very well aware that your troubles began with a splendid, generous offer on your part for my family. And I could be a lot easier without my anger if you hadn't been so good to them. Now, look, lady, for heaven's sake, don't, don't cry. I, I, mean... I may have to cry, John, and shout and throw a few things before I'm over this. I know that you're not the only one that's been evading and dodging things around here. But Delia, that's what I would expect from her. And poor Kevin, I mean, my God, he was just caught right in the middle. Have you ever lied to me before this? No, lady, I have not. If I'd have known what was going on, just There wasn't know. a blessed thing you could have done. Well, I could have kept my mouth shut when Delia was around. Hi, did someone mention my name? Uh-oh. What if the perfect guy for you is in L.A. or D.C. or New York City? Get ready to take A Holiday, a new original reality series, all new tonight at 10 on SoapNet.